It's sad to say too, it's like, you know, more and more men are not going to be getting married. We used to marry till death do us part. Today we marry till love dies. Men are not afraid of marriage, so. Uh, nobody married me, I'm 46, and I am happily living with all of my animals. The idea of marriage doesn't interest men anymore. Peace is rewarded for not playing the game. Why do so many women today say they don't need a man? Because we're independent as hell. I've been single for a really long time because my standards are, at this point, they're through the roof. Like, good luck meeting them. I ended a relationship and cut off an engagement from a great man. Modern women today are romance killers. Their selfish desires killed a beautiful thing. Kindly subscribe to the channel as it is our sole form of support. Thank you. It's sad to say, too, it's like, you know, more and more men are not going to be getting married because they see this shit. Like, why would I ever go through that? What's the benefit of getting married? You know, it's the same same thing as a relationship. Like, like what can a, wo a woman offer me in a marriage that she can't offer me in a regular relationship? So you're going to see that more and more. And to be honest, it's going to be so sad for women. But at the end of the day, you know, they're they're putting themselves through this shit. You know, they're the ones doing this to themselves, so. I've got a new question for you guys. Why do you think guys no longer want to get married? Here's what I think. I think MGTOW men have allowed themselves to be influenced by social media into believing that all women are feminists or feminazis. But in real life, you can tell people what you're looking for and what it is that you want. There are women out there that are looking for something that could be very much alike to what you're looking for. Maybe you've been hanging out with shallow or greedy people. And, well, maybe that's on you and what you've been putting out there. But I think women don't reflect what the media says about them. And neither should you. Now, what's your opinion? Thanks to divorce, I don't have my daughter on my very first Father's Day. Never sign a contract where the other person is literally rewarded for breaking it. It's a bad business move. Girls are not worth it anymore. I would rather invest money and time on something else that would pay me back with joy or assets. A lot of women ain't worth marrying in today's world. Men don't want marriage anymore because marriage is very risky. There are so many things stacked against men. Not only does he have to constantly try and make her feel happy, but the court system is also heavily skewed in favor of women. In cases of divorce, men are often at a disadvantage when it comes to child custody, alimony, and asset division. Even if he's a great husband and father, the possibility of losing half of everything he's worked for, along with limited access to his children, is a terrifying reality. Furthermore, the expectations placed on men in marriage have become overwhelming, He's expected to provide financially, emotionally, and socially, while often receiving little recognition or support in return. Meanwhile, any unhappiness on her part, regardless of his efforts, could be used as justification for ending the marriage. And if she decides to leave, he's still on the hook financially through alimony or child support, even if she initiates the separation. So I just found out the boy who likes me, who I don't like back, is finally moving on from me because I rejected him. Maybe I was kidding. Maybe I do like you now. Don't go liking someone else. I would never propose to no mother man. Get down on one knee. Get down on one knee and ask a man if he'd marry me. I'd rather drink bleach. I'd rather be alone for the rest of my days than to propose to someone's son. Stop! Um, and here's a secret that many guys don't know, especially in today's day and age, is that women love nice guys. <laughs> we may not understand how much we love and appreciate them until we're a little older um, and we've gotten that sort of asshole phase out of our systems. Uh, I'd say by our late 20s, early, early 30s 
is uh, the point in our lives when we're just exhausted by the jerks and we have no time in our lives anymore for them. So we really start looking for men who uh, we know will be great long-term partners, aka nice guys. And that's you. But don't worry. There are plenty of women your age too who are dying to meet a really nice good guy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure many men know this secret by now. Some men even experience it firsthand. What they're experiencing isn't the love she has for the nice guy. It's the security he brings after she's done roaming the streets. These women often spend their younger years chasing excitement and thrill-seeking relationships, prioritizing bad boys or casual flings. But when they've exhausted that phase and realize the streets don't offer stability, they turn to the nice guy for the safety net he provides. This often leaves the nice guy feeling used and unappreciated, as she's not with him for who he is, but for the comfort and stability he can give her. Many men today see through this now, realizing that being the backup plan isn't a position of honor, it's a trap. It's why so many nice guys are choosing to walk away, knowing their worth, and refusing to settle for someone who only values them when it's convenient. And you know what? I don't like to date my type of guy anymore because I feel like it's really boring because he treats me so good. When you get treated good, it's kind of like boring and don't hate me, but I do love toxic. I like somebody who like, I don't mean mistreats me in a bad way, but you know what I mean by toxic? Yeah. That's my time. Like right now, because I'm 19, um, I think I would like a confident sort of looking alpha male. But later on in life, I'll definitely like the more safe guy, the more, you know, someone that I would potentially like to marry. Like later on in life, though, the more safe guy, safe guy, safe guy. Shut up, bitch. I don't yeah. buy the idea that there is a one and only. We used to marry till death do us part. Today we marry till love dies. We used to marry and have sex for the first time. Today you marry and you stop having sex with others. You used to have monogamy, one person for life. And today monogamy is one person at a time. And everybody says I'm monogamous in all my relationships. The norms are changing so fast. There is nothing you can do when you leave a person than to tell them, so sorry that you're hurting them, you have loved them deeply and you wish them the best and you thank them for everything they've given you and yet you're going to go. And it is just raw pain. You can't circumvent that. Heartbreak is heartbreak. I agree. The idea of marriage and having a beautiful family is becoming something of the past. Modern women are so entitled today and they're causing their own loneliness with these crazy expectations they have. They've been conditioned to believe they deserve everything without compromise, which leaves them constantly chasing an ideal that doesn't exist. This entitlement, paired with unrealistic standards, makes forming meaningful connections almost impossible. Vows today in marriage don't mean anything when it comes to feelings. If she feels unhappy, she walks away. If she feels like you're not enough, despite everything you're doing, she walks away. It's no longer about working through challenges, honoring commitments, or building a life together. Instead, marriage has become disposable, as though love and loyalty are optional and only relevant when everything is perfect. What's worse is that society often supports this mindset. Women are told they're empowered for leaving relationships at the slightest inconvenience, while men are shamed for wanting traditional values like loyalty, respect and partnership. Women telling men that they'll start to cook for them after they're married would be like men telling women that they'll start to pay for dates after they're married. Are men the only ones that are supposed to make effort before getting engaged? Makes no sense. Most of the time, men don't end up marrying the woman they love because they might not feel respected with her. And they end up leaving and marrying a woman they feel respect some more. Giving up on all the love they have for the other woman. Why? Because for a man, respect be beats love. For a woman, love beats everything. And she will end up taking the person she loves over anything and anyone. A lot of 
men do get married because they want a maid, a chef, a house cleaner, a ho- like all of these things, which that's totally fine if that's what if that's his wants and needs out of the partner. But then don't expect for her to bring in income just as much yeah. as you, but then also take on those roles and also have babies for you. Like it's just like how much do you want out of this person? And then when the woman gets tired and she can't she can't like do anymore then then it's upset then it's like oh she's not the same as she was the truth is that men just want a partner and trust me most men do not require some extravagant lifestyle that is provided for by his woman working because most men are fulfilled by their family and by their work they don't have to have a lot of extra so the other perspective that i would ask as a woman is how much of it are you putting on yourself and how much of this should be talked about before or getting married because these unspoken expectations are what break relationships. And it is both of your responsibilities to make sure that you're on the same page. Because if you do this, if you go into the marriage with everything communicated and things compromised on, but then your man doesn't hold up to it, then absolutely he's in the wrong. And you best believe he's going to know it. Men do not get married because they want a maid or a house cleaner. Men want someone who wants them just as much as they want her. Marriage is about give and take, a partnership where both sides contribute to building a life together. These women keep talking about what they're doing in the marriage, raising kids, cleaning or managing the household, but they conveniently leave out the heavy responsibilities the man takes on. They don't talk about maintaining the house, fixing the car, paying the bills, or ensuring there's a roof over everyone's head, all of which typically falls on the man. They close their eyes to everything the man is doing and focus only on what they feel they're doing alone. Yet, without the man's constant effort to keep things running smoothly and provide financial stability, none of their contributions would even be possible. It's as if they believe their role ends where his begins, and any acknowledgement of his sacrifices is conveniently forgotten. Because I knew this person would let me walk all over them, I would constantly up the scale of the fucked up shit that I would do. I would say meaner shit. I would lie even worse. I would manipulate even harder. And as fucked up as it sounds, like so much of me felt so validated. Name one benefit that a man gets from marriage that he wouldn't get in a regular relationship. Just one. Well, you, I think, as a woman, if you're... I'm mar- asking you as a man, since you're... You know, yeah, thank I you think, for being Peter well, Pan. I Pans. think I think a lot of men who, who choose to get married are incentivized by the fact that they are able to claim that woman is theirs. And no, they but know, name one benefit that they would get in a marriage that they wouldn't get in a regular relationship. Well, I think even though it's not 100 percent, there's peace of mind that that woman is not the answer is there's none. The answer is there's none. You're well, dancing around. So I fully agree with him. I'm going to play the other side for a second. This woman is supposed to represent a lot of women. If you watch her videos, it's constantly teaching other women how to manipulate men to get what they want out of relationships. But the problem with this type of content is they never take into consideration the needs of a man or how to treat him. It's always about what she can get out of him. So she doesn't know the answers to questions like this because she's not concerned about how her actions actually affect men. It's not a long-term game. It's a more short-term thing to get what you want. So let me answer that. The only benefit I can think of that a man gets out of marriage is I've seen a lot of divorce lawyers talk about this. When you have a long-term partner and you're not married, it creates complications if you were to break up and how to divide everything. And you may have to go to court a few times to sort everything out. So being married, so when you're married, it's treated a little bit differently in the court systems and it's a little bit easier. This doesn't necessarily mean men will get better deal out of the situation because we all know men often get screwed. There is absolutely no benefit that a man gets in marriage that he doesn't already receive in a regular relationship. Marriage, in today's climate, often feels like a one-sided deal where men shoulder the risks while women reap most of the rewards. And this woman here is absolutely right. The woman she's describing belonged to the Sprinkle Sprinkle Army a group that teaches women how to use, manipulate, and take advantage of men for money. These women aren't looking for love or mutual respect. They're being groomed to see relationships as transactions, 
where the sole goal is to extract as much as possible from men while giving little to nothing in return. This movement is essentially raising an army of materialistic women who are taught to view men as walking wallets. The focus isn't on building a life together, supporting each other, or forming a genuine connection. Instead, these women are being trained in tactics to manipulate men into funding their lifestyles. And it's all in the name of what they think they deserve. Now, I personally only date generous men or men that are inspired to take care of me because I naturally am a nurturer. I'm going to take care of you. Whatever I see need you need, I'm going to do. If your dishes aren't organized, I am going to organize them. If I feel like you need something business-wise and I can help, I am going to or I'm going to find a way to help you. I feel like if I am in your life, I'm going to add value intentionally. I'm going to pay attention to where you don't even have to ask. If you need something, I got you. So I am only dating people who feel the same way. If you are not inspired to take care of me or or to make sure that my life is easier by being around me, baby, you don't have anything for me. I don't have anything for you. If I'm too masculine around you, it's simply because I'm not for you. You're not the man for me and I'm not the woman for you because women naturally submit to men that they feel safe and comfortable around. Baby, the math is not math. And I have said this once and I will say it again. No man wants no aggressive woman if you're upset about something and you know you're talking with, with a little bit more aggression in your voice a little bit more passion in your voice okay but when you just over the top aggressive don't, don't nobody want to deal with that and no man wants a woman with all this aggression and masculine energy and i've never understood why so many women don't understand that because let you detect any type of feminine energy in a man y'all will drag him through the mud now, men can't even eat certain foods or drink certain drinks at a restaurant without y'all trying to say he's feminine but you want him to deal with that aggressive masculine personality that you got basically men don't want to date themselves they don't want to be in a relationship with someone who mirrors the same energy struggles or assertiveness they carry Men want balance, a partner who complements them, not competes with them. This is why many men are avoiding relationships with angry masculine women. Dealing with a woman who exudes aggression, dominance or hostility can feel more like a constant battle than a loving partnership. Unfortunately, many women in the West have adopted these masculine traits often as a response to societal pressures or the misguided belief that this makes them strong or independent. This is one of the key reasons why so many men are traveling overseas to find partners. In other parts of the world, femininity is still celebrated and valued. Women in these cultures understand the importance of nurturing, kindness and mutual respect in a relationship. They aren't trying to compete with men or dominate them. They're focused on building a harmonious partnership.